Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to build the Tiny Turbo Tutor Wing, specifically for FT Tiny Tutor. Now, if you guys know about the original FT Tiny Tutor, it is a small sub 250 version of the original Tutor, which is frankly one of our most popular trainers of all time. We wanted to take the Tutor and shrink it down to a sub 250 size so that you could have the freedom to build and the fly without the need of remote ID. If you're ready to build along with me, let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. So our tiny turbo tutor wing is gonna include the following. We're gonna have our main tiny turbo tutor wing. We're gonna have two control horns and a push rod. First thing we wanna do to get started is pop out all the pieces, we'll identify them, and they'll start putting it together. Now that we have all our pieces popped out, let's go ahead and identify them and we'll start assembling. First, we have our main wing section. Now this wing section is not gonna require any dihedral, so the center seam here, we are gonna be gluing together. Following that, we also have our main center spar and our outer main spars. Let's go ahead and first glue the seam together. And I always like to keep these little scrap pieces of foam handy because they make fantastic squeegees. Now this is our Flight Test FT300 glue gun. One reason why I really love this is because we have a temperature gauge on the bottom. Now a lot of people think more heat means more control and better experiences with hot glue. It actually makes the glue boil because this can go all the way up to where you can glue wood together. I like to set mine between the medium and the one notch below. In this case, I'm right on the one notch below. It's a smaller airplane. I still have plenty of time to work with the heat, but it's not so hot that it's gonna take long to build. To glue the two wing halves together, I'm gonna to start and stop about a quarter inch from the edge. And I'm gonna put a nice healthy bead of glue because I wanna see this squeegee out when I fold it together. Now I can lay it flat up against the table and I can run over this and scrape off any excess. Keep this held flat up against the table to make sure that it doesn't hold any warps to it so your wing is nice and flat. We're gonna give this about a minute to fully dry before we move on to the next step. Now the tiny turbo tutor sport wing here is going to bring your airplane over 250 grams. One technique you can use if you choose, and we demonstrated even in our recent videos like the weight loss challenge, is by peeling the paper from the interior foam from your wings and also your fuselage. About 40% of your weight is actually in the facing paper on our foam board, so removing one portion of that can save you a lot of grams. Now that we have our wing halves together, I'm just going to take my razor blade and I'm going to lightly go through the score line just to reestablish where my leading edge is. Make sure that you don't cut through the facing paper on the bottom. Now I'm gonna fold this over 180 degrees and now I can cut my double bevel on both sides of my leading edge. To cut a nice bevel cut, you're not gonna hold your razor blade 90 degrees to your cut. You're actually gonna angle it very sharp and this is gonna help your razor blade glide through the foam without wandering back and forth. Now one thing to keep in mind is you wanna keep it off the center facing paper in the middle. So what I like to do is I hold at a cute angle, I always look ahead of my cut and I make sure my fingers are away. And as I glide it down, just a little bit short, there we go. And as I glide my cut through, it'll make a nice smooth cut. Now don't worry if your cut looks choppy and if your paper starts peeling or pulling, that means your razor blade is dull, get a new one. Let's go ahead and do the same process now on the other side. Again, I'm just kind of angling this towards the camera so you guys can see it. My blade is at a nice cute angle. It's not at 90. And I'm gonna keep it just on in, just in top of the uh, facing paper in the middle. And I'm just gonna take my time, a little saw motion, get through that glue there. And there we go. Notice I started and stopped it just beyond where the uh, fold is. This is gonna give me the ability to fold it over, but it's not gonna make these outer wing tips thin or weak. Now it's a really good idea to kind of establish your bend. And what I like to do is slowly rock this back and forth, not in one motion, but in a few, until I can just about get it all the way to 180 degrees. If you can't easily bring it up to 90 degrees, that means your bevel cuts aren't deep enough, Go ahead and shave a little bit more foam off until you can easily bring it up to at least 90 degrees, preferably a little bit beyond it. Using flat hands, I'm just gonna press this down all the way to 180 and you can see my wings already want to take shape and that's good. Our next step is to install our spars. My center spar is gonna go right in the middle, just like you see here. Because we have no dihedral, we just glue it right down. One thin bead of glue is all you need 
And again, if you wanted to save weight, you could peel all the paper. There we go, there's one. And the same process now on our outer spars. We always like to do a test fit first. It should uh, end up really nice right in between all the etch lines, and it does. A simple bead of glue is all we need. I always start and stop just a little bit on the inside of my glue joints, just to make sure it doesn't spill over too far. And I'll do the other side as well. There we go. We're gonna let this fully dry for at least 30 to 40 seconds, and then we can start establishing the curve in our upper portion of our wing. Now using our thumb and our fingers here, I'm gonna put my thumb under the top surface of the wing, and I'm gonna very gently start folding this down. And you're gonna see it starts an under camber. Now, if you've already built the original Tiny Tutor, this is very similar, but also a little bit different because this bottom plate actually goes much further back, and that's to give us a faster, more aerobatic airfoil. Establishing that curve ahead of time is gonna make it easier, so when we fold this over for our first fold, it's simply gonna fall into place very nicely. We do wanna lock down this wing shape, so I'm gonna put a light bead of glue now, right down the edges. I don't have to go all the way completely to the edge on both sides. Now we're gonna go back down again, and I'm gonna press this main spar with the flats of my hands, and I'm gonna hold the trailing edge firmly against the table. The important thing is, is our center spar should be parallel to the table, and the back trailing edge should be touching firmly against the table. You don't have to push hard with the tips of your fingers, or else you're gonna dent the foam. Just simply spread your hands out, leave them nice and flat, and hold it in place. Oftentimes you'll see me kind of wandering back and forth. That's just to make sure that the glue is pressed out and flat everywhere around it. After about 30 seconds, you're gonna see that our airfoil has now been established and we're ready to glue this down. Now before we put the glue down, make sure that you have plenty of glue in your hot glue gun or you have an extra glue stick by your side, just in case you run out. I always like to start at the leading edge, starting and stopping about a quarter inch. I'm gonna to go to the spars, one, two, and three. And then finally, the trailing edge of the bottom plate. I try to keep it easily within a quarter inch. There we go. Now we're gonna fold this over. And again, using our hands nice and flat, we're gonna press this down. And after about a minute, minute and a half, we have a wing. The only difference is now we have to cut our ailerons in. Let's go ahead and do that next. Our score cuts are already made. All we need to do is bend our aileron 180 degrees and we're ready to bevel cut on the aileron side. Same way that we did on our leading edge, we're gonna make sure that we start our razor blade and it's kind of difficult to get right to the very edge. So what I like to do is come back and just use a little bit of a sawing motion and finish it off. So I'm gonna start right about here. I'm gonna go down in. And I'm always focusing ahead of the razor blade but also looking at that facing paper. There we go. Now to clean up this back edge here, all I need to do is just reverse the blade and with a, just a gentle saw motion, we can cut it nice and neat. Now if you don't wanna use a razor blade, you can always use a sanding block and we do have a video explaining more about that. The important thing whenever we're doing a bevel cut for any of our control surfaces is you should have no resistance when you push it down or push it up. Feel resistance either way, specifically down. Go back and cut your foam a little bit closer to the facing paper. It'll remove that problem. Now this hinge by itself will last a long time, but if you saw the kind of punishment we put this airplane through as we we're trying to fly through our manufacturing building. Oh. No! Landing. You want your control surfaces to be as strong as possible. An easy way to do that is by a reinforced hot glue hinge. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take a piece of our scrap foam, make sure it has a nice sharp angle on it. We're gonna take our hot glue gun, and without pushing too much glue in, we're gonna lay a thin ribbon of glue right between where the facing paper and the foam meet. Now we're not gonna leave this alone. We're gonna go ahead and take our squeegee, and as soon as we put this down, we're gonna scrape off all the excess. And what I like to do is go back two or three, four times, as many times as it takes, to make sure that you're not seeing any extra glue residue built up around your hinge line. You wanna see all that glue pushed down into the foam and the facing paper. Same process on the other side here. We're gonna fold this over. This one's a little bit easier to do. Now 
I'm just gonna dress this up just a little bit here. That moves beautifully. Grab a scrap piece of foam. Again, the very tip is gonna go right on top of our facing paper. Really thin bead of glue right down the middle. Then we'll take our scrap foam and squeegee off the excess. After this is fully dry, if you feel any kind of resistance or you find any kind of glue globs, you can always go back with your razor blade and shave those down and remove them. Now that our hinges and our ailerons are all done, we're ready to move on to our next step, and that's servo preparation and also adding the linkage stoppers to our control horns. The servos that we're going to be using are the exact same servos we're using on the original Tiny Tutor, and if you bought our Power Pack A, you're going to have two extra servos and also the extra linkage stoppers included in that kit. The servo arm that we're going to be using for this application is going to look just like this. Now you're going to notice that there's two sides, so we want to remove one side. In this application, we're going to go ahead and start with the first servo arm, but if you want to later on and you really want to get crazy or you're an advanced pilot, you can go to the middle one. I would strongly recommend no matter what your skill level is, start with the very first hole before moving on. This is going to give you the most resolution and also really good control. I always like to center my servos here, and I'm just gonna use our servo centering tool. You can get this from our store, or you can also get it included in our crafty kit. A really cool trick that we also like to use is we take our little easy battery, and we plug it in. We just wanna make sure that we don't do any reverse polarity, and this will help us cycle the servo. With the servo arm, we're only gonna offset it one tooth forward from our neutral position. So where your servo arm is typically 90 degrees from your servo, this is gonna be one tooth forward, from that position. This is gonna give us something called differential aileron. Differential aileron is where one aileron is gonna raise more than the one that drops. And this is gonna obviously work both to the left and to the right. Differential aileron, especially through your linkages, is a really good way to get a nice axial roll and not get what we call adverse yaw. And that's where the dropping aileron causes more drag. And even though you're banking to the right or the left, the nose is actually going the opposite direction. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this down, and at the end of this, feel free to pause the video because I'm gonna hold both of these together and you can see exactly what it should look like. And you can see that both these are nice and centered and they're both leaning towards the front. Now when we install these, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we put the right one on the right side and we'll cover that next. But first, let's go ahead and make sure we take our servo screw and lock these down. Now whenever we're taking a servo arm screw, you're always gonna to wanna to make sure that you pick the shortest, smallest screw. This servo screw here is actually meant to fasten your servos down when you have maybe a plywood servo mount. The smaller one is the one you wanna use in your servo arms. If you put the large one in the center, you're gonna strip out your gears and blow up your servo. It's really important just to, to keep your servos nice and safe, especially these lightweight ones. Always support your servo arm as you tighten it down and don't over tighten your servo screw. These smaller servos are incredibly durable for their size, but keep in mind, they're very small and they do have plastic gears. So support them whenever possible and don't over tighten your screws. All right, one last test. And that's good. I'm gonna bring these back to the middle and then we can unplug them. Let's also prepare our control horns. Our control horns are gonna fasten into our aileron. And one thing I've absolutely fallen in love with, and I can't believe I'm saying this, is these linkage stoppers. In our version two of our new power packs, we now include the brass linkage stoppers. And my favorite feature about them is we're able to once again source our little nylon stoppers. That means that you're no longer having to spin the little nuts on the bottom and then lock it down with either some Loctite or a drop of hot glue or even CA. You simply can pop these on and they clip right in place. They're incredibly easy to install and even easier to adjust now. To install our linkage stoppers, all we need to do is pass it through the control horn hole. The hardest part is picking up our little nylon piece. And then all we have to do is press it into place until it pops. Make sure that we have our two linkage stoppers facing away from each other. Now 
These laser holes are specifically sized to fit linkage stoppers, and with these, you don't have to do any drilling. Our next step now is to install our servos. We're not gonna wanna install our servos where the servo arm is pointing towards the back like you see here. We're gonna wanna install our servos so the servo arm is pointing towards the leading edge, which is right here. So we have trailing edge, leading edge, servo arm pointing forward. We also have to guide our wires. Now you can choose to kind of straighten out your wire if you want and to pass it through. But we also give you the single wire here and there's plenty of length on this to have multiple attempts at cutting and making your push rods. I'm gonna go ahead and take my pliers and I'm just gonna bend a simple hook. The simple hook is all we need to be able to pass right on through. And with a little bit of an angle here, I can now grab my servo wire. I like to kind of pull it down just like that. And then pass it right on through. You're gonna notice that this is perfectly cut out to easily be able to lay down nice and flush. Let's go ahead and do the other side here and we're not gonna glue our servos down until we make sure everything works and fits properly. Once again, I'm just gonna line this up, pop it right down and in there. Now that our servos are in place, our next step is to install our control horns. Make sure you remember when we're done with this, we're gonna go back and we're gonna glue these servos down. You don't want them fall out in flight. Our servo arm should always have the linkage stopper passing towards the outside. I'm just gonna use a table to my friend here. I'm gently gonna press these down into place. And what we should see when we lay this in place is that the linkage stopper is directly over a hinge line. Next, we're gonna pass our push rod to the hole that's closest to our servo screw. And I always like to go about the width of the barrel beyond the servo arm. This gives us plenty of room for adjustment, but at the same time, it's not gonna be so long that it's gonna bind up. So generally about maybe an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch. There we go. I can pass this down. And we're gonna make, check that, make sure it fits in place. That looks wonderful. There we go. Now I can simply put a bead of glue right down where the control horn is gonna go and glue it in place. Once we power up our servos one last time before we glue them down, we'll be able to center this up and lock down our linkages. Same process now on the other side, but we need to make our own push rod because we only have one wire. A really easy way to do that is by simply taking your pliers and we're gonna grip this about one centimeter or a quarter inch down. We're gonna bend it 90 degrees. There we go. You can see we have our 90 degree bend right there. Now we're gonna go about three millimeters down we're gonna grip it really tight, and you can see that I'm holding this perpendicular to my pliers. When I bend this 90 degrees again, what we're gonna have is what we call a modified Z-bend. A modified Z-bend is really good to be able to kind of poke into a control horn or a servo arm, but we don't want it in this case. So now our next step and our final step is, we're gonna grip this and slowly rotate this 90 degrees. There we go. And just like that, we have a perfect Z-bend. Always try to avoid making Z-bends by simply grabbing it and bending it, because what you're gonna end up with is a very large, wide open, smooth Z-bend. And it's gonna wander back and forth, and especially for smaller airplanes like this, it'll cause the controls to not be as responsive. We have our Z-bend made, we're gonna follow the exact same process as we did before. Quick test fit, press it right down in that gap. That looks fantastic, it's right over the hinge line. We're gonna pass our push rod through our servo arm closest to the, to the closest hole. There we go. And again, about an eighth to three eighths, sixteenths of an inch past the barrel, we're gonna cut it. 
hold on to your push rod wire because you never know what scratch build you're going to do later or if you want to make some replacement parts. Now we're going to pass this through. One last fit. That's perfect. And we're going to hold this down and let it fully dry. Last step, we're gonna bring our servo centering tool back in, or you can even bring the airplane back in if you want and hook up to a Y harness and do this. But I'm just gonna use my centering tool. We're gonna power it on. And just like before, we're gonna plug it in. There's one. And there's two. What I'm looking for here is I'm making sure I line up my ground and my signal. My ground is going to be either brown or black, and my signal is going to be either orange or white. So you can see I could wiggle these, but I want is the light in the middle to be centered. Let's go ahead and just slightly lift up our servos. I'm going to put a bead of glue, making sure that we don't accidentally glue our servo arm down, and we're going to press it down into place. There's one. And here's two. And now that our servos are glued down, we're just gonna press this flat up against, which will line up our servos and our back wing plate, and we can lock down our linkage stopper. One. And there's two. Now you're gonna see when I cycle this, that the aileron that raises, raises much higher than the aileron that lowers. And that's how we were able to get those very nice axial rolls to be able to roll it around without that adverse yaw. Now one last step that you can do if you choose here is most likely if you've already built a Tiny Tutor, you have a ton of these lying around because we always include extra. You can reinforce this back trailing edge of your wing from your rubber bands simply by cutting a piece of barbecue skewer just slightly shorter than the actual foam because you don't want it to bind with your ailerons. And we can glue it right on the top. Now this isn't a have to, this is just if you want to make it just a little bit more durable. I'm just cleaning out that center. I had a little glue glob that was kind of keeping this up a little bit. And that's gonna sit nicely right there. This is more just of a tip. It's not a necessity, but I do love how durable it makes the wings. There we go. Well friends, at this point, our FT Tiny Turbo Tutor wing, try to say that three times fast, is now done. We're ready to move on to our next step, which is installing it. And just like in the original video here, our center of gravity is established through these knots right here. All we need to do is plug our Y harness in and connect it to our aileron port. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Now, if you're working with a six channel radio, you could run these down and you could even program things like flap rods. We're not gonna worry about that right now. We're just gonna use our Y harness and we're gonna plug it in. Make sure that you line up your signal wire with your signal wire on your wire harness. And check this with every connection, no matter how many planes you've built, because it's so easy to accidentally plug it in backwards. And as I mentioned before here, I'm gonna go ahead and take my throttle port. I'm gonna plug that into port number one. So we have in the spectrum, we have battery and then servo port number one. My Y harness is gonna go into port number two. And again, we're making sure that the signal lines up with the signal. And in this case, it's on the top. That was my rudder, so this is my elevator. Elevator's gonna go and serve a port three. And then finally, rudder goes in the server port four. Now these wires are plenty long enough and I also have my propeller removed. Anytime we're messing around with first setting up an airplane, always remove your propeller. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in right now. We're gonna power on the transmitter. We're gonna make sure everything works the right direction. And transmitter's on first, we're gonna plug this in. All right, so now we can go ahead and tentatively put everything back in. And we're just gonna check and make sure that all of our controls are working in the right direction. 
Now typically when I set this up on the field and I'm checking my direction on the field, I'm always making sure that I'm looking uh, down as if I'm flying inside the airplane. But for the setup on this video, I'm just gonna point it towards you guys so that way you can see the orientation that you should be looking at your plane in. So when you're checking your server direction, this should be the orientation you're looking at. You should be looking down, you should be looking down the plane towards the nose. I'm gonna hold my transmitter up and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check our aileron control. On my right stick, if I push my stick to the right, you should see the right aileron go up. And it does. Same thing with the left, left aileron goes up. Our ailerons are perfect. Now when I pull my stick back, I should see the elevator go up. And it does. Push forward, we're going down, elevator's going down. And then finally, when I push my rudder to the left, I should see my rudder deflect left and deflect right. All right, everything is now set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna assign two different rates here. Although this is minimal deflection compared to many aerobatic airplanes, this will spin this plane like a drill bit. So all I need to do is I'm first time flyer, I can go to my servo, I can go over to travel, and I can dial this down to maybe 80 or 75%. Another thing I can do is I can go to the main screen and I can go to dual rates and expo. I can go to my aileron and I can even assign this to a switch. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it on the whole time. I'm gonna dial my rate down to 80% and I'm gonna dial my expo. That's the softness in the middle to about 25. This is gonna be a nice gentle control right in the middle, but if you really wanna get aggressive, you have that extra control on the outer part of your stick. You can adjust this to any way you want and you can even assign this to a switch where you can have low rates and high rates. And that's covered in our setup videos that you can find easily or you can read the manual. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this. Everything's working great. Let's go ahead and just set my battery in here. And our last thing we wanna do is we just wanna check our center of gravity here. What we should see when we put our hands on the dots is this perfectly level or slightly nose down. Now this is pretty much perfectly level, which means when I put my prop on, we're gonna be all set to fly. Thanks for being part of the Flight Test family, and we'll see you next time.